Thanks everyone for tuning in to Let's Stop Money. Right after the union budget, our focus is simple. What should your savings and investment strategy be this year, keeping in mind some of the key announcements of the union budget 2016? Now, the most positively received announcement was the government's intention to adhere to the fiscal deficit target of 3.5% in 2016-17. Almost everyone is speaking of a rate cut now. We are asking the experts today, how will this affect stocks and the debt market? And should you be looking at certain kind of investments more than others? The other second big headline, the huge controversial announcement of taxing 60% of employees provident fund corpus at withdrawal was really actually meant to nudge people towards looking at another long-term pension product, the National Pension System or NPS. Well, now, with this union budget, 40% withdrawal on maturity has been made tax-free. Today, we'll decode NPS for you and get the panel to tell us whether NPS makes sense for building a retirement kitty for you. My guest today, Navneet Munod, CIO, SBI Mutual Fund. Also with me here in the Delhi studio, Krishan Malhotra, National Practice Head Tax, Shardola Marchand Mangaldas and Co. And Amit Kukreja, Founder Wealth Being Advisors. Now, Let's begin with the fiscal deficit target. Navneet, my first question to you is, I think the whole cheer in the stock markets and the bond markets, both markets reacted extremely positively to this announcement that we will meet 3.9% fiscal deficit target for this year and next year 3.5%. Decode this for us in terms of what is going to happen now to my mutual fund portfolio. Where should I be putting money if my SIPs, SIPs continue and I have some bulk how would you distribute it for me? So to make good returns on asset classes like equity and bonds over a longer period, one of the most important thing is to have a stable macroeconomic environment in the country. And for that, the important things are a fiscal prudence and a good monetary policy framework. In the last two or three, two, two and a half years, we have seen that the government is very committed to create the foundation for a sustained growth, uh, a kind of nice era, non-inflationary continued expansion. It also reduces our vulnerability on the global economy and global markets because the domestic savings improve if you have a stable macro environment. And I think in this very challenging global environment, in the very uh, distressed rural area, the stressed corporate balance sheet, banks balance sheet, there's a lot of clamor for government to spend its way out. I mean to promote the to, to prop up the economy by spending more but full credit to the government for adhering to the fiscal deficit target i think the fiscal prudence the fiscal consolidation will go a very long way in creating a structural foundation for a sustained growth which augurs well for both the equity market and the bond market Along with all the other measures in terms of improving the ease of doing business, the simplification of tax laws, redressal mechanism, more spending on the rural area, particularly on the rural infrastructure side to create more jobs. I think that all will do well for the corporate profitability going forward, taking some stress out of the banking sectors by some of the measures that have been announced by the RBI and the government will go a long way in, in, in removing the concerns. So I think both augur well and as you rightly mentioned, there is a possibility of an interest rate cut now because of the fiscal prudence. So I think it is good for both the markets. Both the markets. So, so, so he's not taking a call. <laughs> but tell me, I mean, sure. is this a time really to look more at long term debt funds, mutual funds, Amit? So <clears throat> yes and no, right? Mm -hmm. So interest rates are going to go down. So obviously long term debt funds should not be our choice. We should stick to short and medium term funds. All so right. if we apply the basics of financial planning, any money that you need in the next three to five years, you can park it in short and medium term debt funds. Any money that you need after five years mm -hmm. can be parked in equity funds. Equity, be given the lower rates, you know, in the coming times will is likely to get into a better profitability, better returns on your equity. So equity definitely holds a very good you know footing debt you so need to protect I, your if money if i have some lump sum money and i would like to take it out at the end of 3 years would your choice be uh, medium term debt funds that's correct i would stick to short and medium term short, debt funds and short is what the period is anywhere between 1 12 months to 18 months 12 months to 18 months all right now what's the outlook on equity mutual funds uh, navneet i'm going to come back to you now 
last one and a half years has been extremely disappointing. Everyone sitting on a 10%, 7% to 10% to 15% depending on the fund that they are, have been in. Uh, going forward, what should the strategy be for investors who have been with equity funds? I mean, is SIP still the route to continue with or do you think this is the time that there's so much positivity around the economy, you could bump up your investments in equity funds? So those who have the SIP should surely continue. Those who don't have the exposure in equity should take advantage of the recent volatility and the uh, depressed market environment and increase the exposure to equities. I would argue in favor of a lump sum investment if your allocation to equities is less. And uh, I, I think those who, who have the money coming in in the next few months should at least start now and can gradually increase the exposure to equities. But at these levels, as you said, that in last one year markets have been down almost like 15% point to point. I think over the next three or five years, equities can deliver decent double digit returns. And I think it's a time to increase your allocation to equities. Amit, would you agree that you be brave? increase your uh, allocation to equity or do you think this is just a short term exuberance global headwinds are still there at the ground level corporate profitability i mean with all that rural spending mm -hmm. uh, effect to actually happen it's going to take a while for corporate profitability to increase so so i are, are we are you are I'll, betting I'll on still one be, year i'll still be cautious mm -hmm. so for me sip and stp is the preferred route any day Second, if I need the money, so don't bump up equities don't bump up. right now. Don't, but don't do lump sum purchases. You mm. can bump up your SIP amount, okay. but don't do lump sum purchases. So lump sum, if you have short term debt into, fund, move it into debt fund and then do a periodic migration from debt to equity within okay. the same fund house. Okay. So do STPs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second, if you need the money between three and five years, keep the money in low risk debt funds. Don't put the money into equity funds because. We saw the equity markets doing well and then we suddenly see, saw a lot of volatility in last 12 months. So you're saying only if you have a period of more than five years then you do a lump sum equity otherwise stick to SIPs in equity and look at debt. All right, I'm going to come to you because there are other things, takeaways uh, from the budget. Now, some of the provisions which were of course to tax the rich people earning more than rupees one crore will now have to pay an additional 3% surcharge on income tax. This means that the tax rate for the rich goes up from 12% to 15%. The second one for those earning an annual dividend income of 10 lakh or more will be required to pay an additional tax of 10%. And finally, buying a luxury car costing upwards of 10 lakh rupees or purchasing goods and services in cash exceeding 2 lakh will now attract a TDS of 1%. So, Krishan, just sum up this for you. It, it seems, you know, this, this whole um, government's intention to tax the rich is very noble, but then you only had eight, the numbers were very small of the people who actually declare tax over a crore. You are absolute. Just to so, add... Mm -hmm. Just to uh, taking on the equity first, I would like to say that there was a big apprehension that the long term capital gain period from one year as it was expected may be extended to three years. That hasn't we, happened. Which hasn't happened. So any investment which you'd like to make, it's already there in the mind. And just to just to uh, reaffirm that if you would see the earlier DTC, which was mm -hmm. direct tax code, where there was a very clear provision to say that there would not be any short and long. If you earn, you just pay the taxes. That was initially DTC plan. So you cannot rule out while making an investment, you, uh, you have to uh, keep it in mind that you may not see the benefit of long term capital gain by the time your investment would be maturing after three to five years. So it is already there in the mind of the government. I thought just to be a little oh. cautious <laughs> in terms of you may have to pay tax on the shares over a period of time, the way we have seen the rumor before, and I think it is already going on okay, in the mind of the government. Now, don't scare us and worry us about that, <laughs> that bit. Right? This year, it has not happened. It has okay, not happened. Fair That's enough. So, 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 in terms of, uh, you are right, your analysis is absolutely right. They wanted to tax rich people. But as far as the dividend is concerned, yes, those who are earning more than 10 lakhs, they would have to pay over and above 20%. Is it double taxation? It, Everyone's it, talking about it and saying this is unfair. Is it unfair? It is unfair because there was also a news that maybe they will remove the dividend distribution tax. The one way because someone whose slab is 2 lakhs, 2.5 lakhs, two, 10 lakhs and someone who is earning more than 1 crore, everyone was paying a dividend distribution tax through a company at the rate of 20%. Right. So there was a lack of 
you know equity so therefore in order to bring this gap one way was that they would have removed the dividend distribution tax which, which was not haven't. that which so in order to tax now those who are having a high slab i think they thought it just let's make it if you are earning more than 10 lakhs so that you pay over and about 20% so, so there's no unfairness in it i think you know when they're just i i've heard the number is 800 people who actually i don't know the 800, numbers but they are not 8, very big i mean the numbers are extremely small of people who really declared incomes of more than a crore amit now means what's your opinion on on uh, the dividend tax i mean i think there has been quite a bit of unhappiness on that front but mutual funds dividends are still not taxed Yeah, so purely on a principal basis, philosophically, I mean, it's a triple taxation. Where corporate pays full tax, then on top of that, when you declare dividend, you pay the dividend distribution tax, and then when you receive the dividend, again you pay tax. So it's as you said, it's not double; it's almost triple. So on a principal basis, but I think the tax revenues had to be increased somewhere, and I'm sure government would have. thought about that where else the uh, uh, tax revenues can be increased and they found that this is probably the Im impacting the least number of people and collect huge amount of money we'll be back in a moment to take a look at the largely ignored national pension system that's uh, you know you got a tax benefit on it this time 40% of the corpus that you withdraw out of nps will be tax free Does it make sense for you to also look at NPS as a retirement saving investment? We'll be back. The huge uproar on taxing 60% of the employee provident fund corpus if withdrawn is now behind us but it's important to note that this move was also driven by the agenda of bringing the national pension system at par with EPF by making both partially taxable now what is NPS it's open to all the indians who want to save all indians pardon me who want to save for their retirement one can invest in NPS throughout the working life and withdraw 60% of the money and use the rest of the corpus to buy an annuity to draw a regular pension on retirement at 60 this was how it was prior to this budget so after 1st april you can now withdraw just 40% and 60% of it goes back for 60% of it goes back into annuity now my question navneet is that uh, how does it stack up now till last year all experts and analysts were saying why would you put an nps your corpus is going to be taxed so you might as well take a 15 year equity mutual fund product a diversified product which is completely tax free and would probably give you a possibility of higher returns as well is it now a more level playing field so la larger point i will make is that of course i think we 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 need to do a lot more work on improving the retirement security and it is not only the poor even the affluent don't have the proper retirement security the way financial planning should be done uh, across the population so we we need to work a lot and then we need uh, uh, proper vehicles for that as you rightly said mutual funds have got a long term track record our, for example our magnum equity fund for 25 years the kind of alpha that it has generated uh, similarly i mean any investor whether in a balanced fund which has around 65 70% in equity and 30% in fixed income can create a portfolio of mutual funds and can can derive those returns over a longer period there could be other platforms also over a period of time i think some of these uh, tax incentives should be extended to other platforms which have got a long term track record of of delivering very good returns mm -hmm. amit what do you think see nps um i would agree that the new announcements which have been made are really good it, mm -hmm. they really make nps a better product but somebody has to do a due diligence of understanding epf versus nps what are they suited for what are the distinguishing product characteristics mm -hmm. one is for making a sustainable pension income the other one is for building a tax efficient lump sum corpus it should not be proposed that both the products are competing with each other there mm -hmm. should be two separate distinguishing products which are being supported by the government okay so we stick to npf npf it should not be nudge the money now to EP, nps Correct. these are different types okay between nps and other mutual funds now tell me right. how does it work see out? if you if you want a very easy way and low cost way of earning money as a pension form in your retirement period nps is any day a winner mm -hmm. 
Okay. But if you if you want a more actively better alpha returns of your accumulated corpus, and if you can rope in an advice to help you do that, then mutual funds would any day beat NPS. You know, mm -hmm. NPS is low cost. Um, uh, product for people who don't want complexity in their lives. Mutual funds is little more complex, but if you have a person who can train you, help you, coach, manage that money, mutual funds would any day be preferred. The returns on the mutual funds have been much stronger mm -hmm. in the last 20 years compared to NPS. But Plus NPS, NPS doesn't have that longer history. That's correct. But well. So, uh, so and, I'm also expecting NPS to go through some so maturity sir, cycles. And and I think from from the perspective of people just feeling that it's it's uh, it's a disciplined product. Once I start it, you have to put in a minimum of 6,000 rupees right. and you know it just inculcates that sort of a discipline okay in the last union budget Krishan an additional tax deduction of 50,000 rupees under section 80 CCD on the contributions to NPS was also announced does that continue yes that continues that continues. so so that 50,000 at least should go to NPS what do you I think? can I can still make more money if I do not look for that tax saving and invest that 50 so saving post the tax, tax into. take it out and yeah. then still look at a balanced fund balanced fund or NPS. a multi cap fund if i have a horizon of 21 years see the lock in of 25 30 years is a long time mm. in equity i can still withdraw money 3 years later 5 years later and move into a better performing fund so as i said if i have a active portfolio management skills or i can rope in somebody who can help me do actively portfolio management hmm. nps would probably not be in my list at all okay final word from you is there anything that we've missed out which is also relevant for from a person's investments and savings krishan one important thing as you would have seen that the government was out with their scheme on the gold monetization scheme 2015 Mm -hmm. Where government thought that those who are holding huge, you know, the gold as we see in our Indian houses, why this money is lying in the lockers, why this gold is lying in the lockers, they wanted to incentivize by coming out with this scheme. But we did not see the success in this scheme. So I think the government, what they have done is because of lack of clarity, they clarified now and it's in a very welcome um, amendment where they are saying that any interest which you receive on the deposits, on the gold deposits, under that scheme or as and when you wanted to in cash by selling mm -hmm. it in the market there would be a long term you know the capital gain now they have clarified to say that you will not have to pay any taxes on the long term capital gains as well as on the interest so okay. I'm sure by will this encourage more people to bring gold in the gold monetization scheme Chris? I think so certainly probably we will have to see the response still there are certain doubts people may have and I think the government is committed to make it more transparent so that people should not have any uh, confusions Confusion in terms of but but i think it's in a good step and mm -hmm. it should really incentivize people to go for it all right now we final word from you how confident are you i mean there was a uh, there was a divergence in opinion between amit and you on 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 the outlook to equity markets but but you are extremely confident that this is the time to bulk up a little bit on your equity portfolio I think so as, as Buffett says I mean you have to be greedy when others are fearful and you have to be fearful when others are greedy I think there is a lot of fear on the street not only in India but globally but I think looking at the uh, economy and if you believe that corporate profitability has bottomed out valuations have improved because of the correction in the market there would surely be volatility but one should take advantage not get swayed by it so I think there's a good time to invest some money from a longer term perspective okay we'll be back after three years gentlemen and see where the market really stacked <coughs> that announcement okay thank you so much navneet munot amit and krishan for coming in today for let's talk money and for all our viewers if you've got a portfolio or an investment question you can write into us at money at ndtv.com and keep updated with all that's happening in personal finance on our twitter handle and fp page thank you so much for joining me see you soon uh -huh.